Right now, we're at Kids Saving the Rainforest, and we're about to work with a truly nocturnal creature. Now, I just met it off camera a second ago, and it is armed with razor sharp claws and some ferocious looking teeth. But believe it or not, this creature eats fruit. So if you guys are ready, I think I'm ready to feed a kinkajou. While filming Breaking Trail, I have taken many intentional bites and stings. However, it's the ones that you don't plan for that can oftentimes be the scariest. Oh, oh, oh. Those are marshmallows. These little squirrel monkeys love marshmallows. Now the trick is gonna be to get one of the squirrel monkeys off of the branch and onto my arm so that he eats the marshmallows. You know that? I think they're coordinating a, a plan here. Coordinating. Did you see that? Oh, oh yeah, right above. Oh, sorry. Did it bite you? Oh, yeah. Grabbed on my arm pretty good. <laughs> I guess he uh, didn't like me with the marshmallow. Just because we plan to film an episode doesn't mean they always work out. And this squirrel monkey mishap was a perfect example. That's a monkey bite. On the Pacific side of Costa Rica, the crew and I spent time filming at Kids Saving the Rainforest, where we had the chance to get the cameras up close with a rescued kinkajou, a nocturnal mammal that can deliver an incredibly painful bite if you aren't careful. All right, now what I want to do is just get a little piece of fruit. I'm going to open up this little crate. Okay, hi. Here we go. Hello there. Look what I've got. Look what Coyote's got. Oh boy, look at those teeth. Come on out. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Come on out. Let's get you all the way out. Oh, there it is. Oh, you going back in? It's like, there's a lot of lights. There you go. That is a kinkajou. You you're gonna go back in there? Oh, you gonna roll over on your back? All right, look at this creature. Now, what I wanna do is kinda keep the fruit close by. And you look at this animal and you think to yourself, wow, it looks like a mix between something out of the weasel family, maybe a monkey. Look at this tail. Looks like a cat, too. Or a cat. This is like the combination of so many different animals, but believe it or not, it's related to the raccoon and the kawatamundi. You love papaya, don't you? There you go. Now you're able to get a little bit better shot. Oh, look at that. Roll over on your back. Can I pick you up? Oh, maybe not. This is not an animal that I want to just try to pick up and handle because it is capable of giving me a pretty good chomp. I need to be as gentle as possible. Here, how about you come up on the tree? Yeah, you can hold him by the tail. Oh, no. oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I don't want to do that. Okay. There you go. Oh, that's, that's impressive. Look at those claws at work there. Here, I got the whole bucket right here. Come on this side. Hi. I'm going to eat right on my hand. Like Whoa, that. did you see those teeth? Oh yeah. You can understand why I do not want this animal to chomp onto my hand. Wow, look at how it's able to just hold on to the food and it's actually balancing itself with its tail. Now that tail works like a fifth hand to be able to help it climb through the tree and obviously hold itself upside down. Look at that, it's completely supporting its weight with its tail and its hind legs. Not even holding on with the front legs at all. And look at these little hands. Five fingers on the front toes. It feels just like the hand of a human shaking hands. Oh, there you go. Here, try this. Licking some fruit off there. What about that? You now, like is this he thing? being gentle with you or what do you think? Um, so far, so good. Now, keep in mind that I just met this creature, so I need to be calm. I need to be quiet, and hopefully, it wants to hang out for a few minutes. But again, I need to be very careful because if it latches onto me with those claws and those teeth, it's going to be a very bad end to this episode. Now the coat is very, very dense, and notice how short all of the fur is. And you've got these coarser guard hairs on the outside, and underneath, it's also pretty coarse. Here, Mark, look, this is a great chance for us to look at the foot. They're actually able to turn their feet 180 degrees backwards, which helps them move in reverse up a tree trunk. But let's come back down here to the head. 
Can you see the eyes from right there? Oh yeah. Yeah, those big eyes allow this creature to see in the dark. Now they are strictly nocturnal. And during the day they will hide in either a cavity inside of a tree or in a cluster of vines. Look at that, he's just completely staying still. Have you had enough to eat? He may be full at this point. He's eaten a lot of the fruit in this bucket. Looks very curious about all these cameras. Surrounding. Yeah, well I have to imagine for a creature that's used to being out in the darkness, it must be pretty disorienting to have all of these bright lights surrounding you. But, you know, for a creature that came from the wild and is being rehabilitated here at Kids Saving the Rainforest, I'd say it is pretty well behaved. All right, well, this kinkajou has had one incredible meal tonight. Ate pretty much the entire bucket of fruit. And I have to say, this is probably one of the most interesting mammals we have ever gotten in front of the cameras. I'm breaking trail. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. If you thought the kinkajou was fascinating, make sure to go back and watch the episode where I got up close with another nocturnal jungle creature, the ocelot. And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on this season of Breaking Trail. Yeah, I hear you talking. You got that pack? Can you see your face? Oh. <laughs>